Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and Me Crafty Scrapper here on YouTube and Instagram and over on Facebook at Me Crafty Scrapper Creates. And today I am showing you how I created this trifold folio and it is going to have a um, removable journal inside of it. It has six pockets and it is made from a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock. And this video is part of a collaboration with Rach and Bella Crafts here on YouTube. This is the Show Some Style Junk Journaling 2023 collab that we have going on. And uh, Mom was a part of it on the 11th. And um, Rachel and Bella's Craft Studio, Angela Kerr, Wendy Journal Adventure, Miss Gail Agostinelli, uh, Corey Dahman, uh, Carol Laws, Rose from Journals and Time, and there's little old me, Carol Ann, uh, Karen from Grace B Creations, uh, Shiva from Berry Mix Journal. Some of these are, are new people to me, so I'm looking forward to watching their videos. I've got a long ministry trip coming up that I will have plenty of time to watch some uh, YouTube videos um, on the way there and on the way back and at night, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, Stacy from Stacy's Craft Jam, Hilltop Views, uh, that's Steph, Shauna from Fraps and Scraps, Joanne from Creating with Jovi, Barbara, Bybar, Paper Lover, and uh, Rachel again. Rachel and uh, Bella are in there a few times just to uh, make sure we get all of the days right after Easter. So that's when we started this collab right after Easter and it goes through to the end of the month. And today is the 20th, barely, when I get this um, loaded. <laughs> and for some across the pond, it's probably the 21st already. But we've had uh, Bethany is sick and we're trying our best to get her well before we leave on this four day ministry trip. So um, that has been a little bit of a struggle. Um, for my praying friends, y'all please pray for Bethany. And, um, <laughs> it's just been, it's, it's been crazy, but yeah, we've got a four day ministry trip and, uh, we are headed to the great state of South Carolina. So, um, any of our South Carolina friends that's on here, um, you can look on our schedule and maybe y'all can come hear us. But, um, this is the four, um, kind of categories we had to choose from for this collaboration. And, um, we wanted to show two different styles. So mine is vintage. This is vintage. And then I'm going to make another one, show you how I made it. And we're going to go shabby chic with it. So for shabby chic, I think of soft and sophisticated. Everything probably that I'm not. <laughs> but I do like that style. But most of the time, I create with a vintage flare. So um, for this other one that I'm going to show you how to make this, I'll open this up in just a minute and show you. Um, I'm going to use like a cream color. So, you know, that's soft and squishy. I love that. Uh, for this one, I use like a maroon brick red color as my background. And that's just a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock. And then I closed it up with some Baker's twine. And um, did a little bit different kind of policy closure there. So I'll show you how I did that. This opens up. Here's the trifold part. I left that blank so it could be extra kind of like hidden journaling there if uh, we wanted to. And then just two extra sheets of the papers that were, you know, cut off hidden back behind there. And then... You open it up. Something was sticking. There we go. Open it up and you have a slot here, a slot here, a slot here, or a pocket. Three pockets there. That's your first pocket or tuck there. So you've got three more pockets there. That's four. Here is five. Okay. And then here is six. So six pockets and we got tabs everywhere. Um, we could put some more words on these tabs. We could actually put another tab out here if we wanted to. 
um, the possibilities are pretty endless. I did not cover the back yet, and I haven't put the uh, removable journal in this one yet because I just thought I would make both of them at the same time on screen. And <clears throat> let's just start with that. Before I give you any measurements for the trifold folio, let's just go ahead and make the removable uh, journals that we're going to put inside of those. So this paper is eight inches by eight inches, so eight inches square, and all we're going to do is fold it in half. Okay, and then you already know now that this is eight inches tall because of our dimensions for our journal, removable journal that's going to go in there. So see, it's going to go in like that. Um, I'm sure that you could actually put these on some kind of flip out and have this actually inserted into it, but it's not going anywhere. Once you get that put in there, get your papers in it, make it a journal, and then wrap this up. It is not going anywhere inside of there. So I'm very excited about this little uh, journal and folio. It's so pretty and it can be a standalone thing or if you've got a bigger journal, a thicker uh, wide spine journal, this could actually be an insert into that, just an interactive part into your journal. You could actually not even cover the back and this could go like on your back cover in your journal be put in like that glued in there and then all of this you know open up that's an idea too so anyway but i'm all for the freestanding deal so we've got eight by eight folded in half so that means we are four by eight and then all of our papers that go inside of this will need to be that too i'm going to go ahead and round my corners and go ahead and ink I'm using, on this one, I'm using Walnut Stain. I think on the shabby chic one that we make, I'm going to use my Hickory Smoke. Just because that's a softer, you know, it's a gray. Um, it might go along with my colors a little better on the shabby chic. But on the vintage one, I'm using Walnut Stain. So all of the back, front, and insides, I'm going to go ahead and ink. And then we're going to get some papers to put inside of this. So we can use some of the papers from the Tim Holtz um, paper pad that I used for all of this. And put in here. And we can put some ledger paper, some book page, uh, maybe a few envelopes for pockets inside of it or something. I don't want it too thick just because it is going inside of this folio. If we make it too bulky, we might have some problems getting the folio closed. So this is more like a big notepad maybe than it is a journal itself, but we can make it like that. Now, um, you already saw that's the cream color 12 by 12 that I'm going to use for my shabby chic one that we're going to make. Here are some, some of the, I think it's all of them. Um, I've got twos of some of them too, of the digitals that um, Rach and Bella gave us to use for the collab. I mean, and it's just, it goes on and on and on the gorgeousness that is this. Now, I could use some of these on my vintage one. Th that's not too shabby chic, so I wouldn't use that in my shabby chic. So this paper I want to use in my little journal, and this paper, and that's what I'm doing. I'm just going to go through all of it, and I see that's kind of shabby chic to me because it's got the brighter colors. It's a little bit softer. It's not as vintage. It is vintage, but it's not as vintage. So I think some of these could be used in my shabby chic one. And let's keep going through here. Now that can be a paper 
for <clears throat> my yes and that's what i'm going through now I'm getting papers to go in my little vintage journal and yep i'm just going to turn it sideways i'm good with that um i might use that in my shabby chic and let's just keep going through here yep that was the welsh vintage ephemera okay and that all is too i just did some of them on a uh, cardstock so i've got some cardstock pieces there this is definitely going in my shabby chic i love that that will go in my shabby chic uh journal insert that i make um this one i'll go ahead and put in vintage that one i'll put in vintage this one i will definitely put oh that's the same it's got the same pattern on that side okay i'm still going to put that one in my yep and that one in my vintage one and then let's see here now that is still vintage but it's got some brighter colors in it so i can use that on maybe some of my pockets the botanical kit um from rach and bella oh look how pretty that is see i'm totally getting a shabby chic vibe off of that too even though there is botanicals you know i might be totally off on <laughs> uh, what i think is shabby chic and um you know what is not anyway um this is the family um collection from rach and bella and look at there it's got a cover for you it's got all of these interiors a uh, steampunky kind of vintage vibe going on with this one and so pretty i want to make a um journal just out of this kit it's so pretty but i think i have enough papers for my vintage notebook that i'm gonna make let's go through this it's um i printed this on Ooh, pretty love those tags i printed this one on cardstock so this is kind of standalone journal card kind of stuff through here love 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 this love those envelopes too beautiful stuff okay so i have these to use in this journal and what i'm going to do is off camera i'm going to cut off all of the white here and then i'm going to get um, some book pages and ledger paper and we're going to go ahead and load up this journal Okay, I've got all of my papers lined up with a little bag in there for a pocket and then I've got some book page in there so what I'm gonna do is get one of my large clips if I can find them um, and I'm going to trim off the ends here because our booklet cover is only four inches wide so I'm gonna go just under four inches just barely under four inches okay so just under four inches and if you have a guillotine trimmer this would be even easier to do with a guillotine and i'm just gonna go start chomping away at all the papers while holding it in place and then you say, oh, Melania, you wasted all of that precious paper that was on the ends. No, 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 I did not waste it. Because you know what I'm going to do? These little strips like this go in a pile beside my sewing machine. And every one of them get zigzag stitching down the middle. And then I use all of those little strips, except ones that that tiny, I don't use those. All those little strips either go on a uh, master board, a collage board, or they get stitched and they're the edge of a page for me. So 
there they go in that pile and now I'm just going to temporarily take that clip off just to make sure oh yeah look at there how almost beautifully perfect that is just right there to the very edge love it so I'm going to go ahead and clip this again to make sure it stays in place and we're going to do our shabby chic one. I'm going to take a page from this collection. This is from uh, Craft Consortium. It is the Baroque collection. And it is just perfectly shabby chic in my eyes. I love, love, love this paper. So here is some soft and sophisticated paper that we're going to use as our journal cover and I'm going to cut it down to eight by eight so let's stick that arm out there eight inches by eight inches and it's going to get folded in half beautiful paper love 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 that okay Fold this, and I am going to round the corners of this one as well. And now we're going to pick out papers to go in this journal. And I think that these colors go beautifully with that. I've got a glassine bag for a pocket in it. Um, so there's some paper and I'll have to cover that up because <laughs> that was printed on a scrap piece of paper, wasn't it? We can just cut that down and make it a small page. Um, yep, we're going to cut down these and I need just a couple more. Hey, look, we didn't put any ledger paper in that. Oh, well, I'm fine with that. Um, let's do this sheet inside of there too that's perfectly shabby chic in my eyes and then this too we can use these tags in the shabby chic folio this comes from the prima collection m-i-e-l miel i'm sure it's pronounced some other way too um <laughs> and that would be the correct way it's probably pronounced but oh well all right, I'm going to cut this at 8 inches and then just under 8 inches. And we can use those pieces. That's going to be inside of the journal, so I made it a little bit smaller. I'm going to use this um, book page. Sorry, I had that right in your face. <laughs> this book page that we actually printed on, um, we did a digital on top of this um, book page on our last collab with Rachel and Bella Crafts. And um, I'm gonna use that in my journal, this, that paper, and then this paper, and I need to cut this one down to get all of that off of there. And I can use that in some somewhere else in the shabby chicness so we can use that in there and this one that'll have to be cut down I'm going to cut the white off of these pages off camera and get everything set to go in our shabby chic journal and then same thing with this um, journal the insert I need to <clears throat> lop off some of that so I'm gonna go right under the four inch mark and start chopping away and then look how beautiful that little booklet is love 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 the designs on that digital so pretty and then I've got more edges to um, do a little zigzag stitch down yay and then when you add that in there got it yay okay i'm going to put that one in there and that one in there and line them up okay 
got my two booklets and I need to ink and like I said I'm going to use hickory smoke so let's go ahead and hickory smoke this one up and now to bind these if you've been with me here on my channel for long you have seen me make plenty of journals and bind plenty of journals so if you don't need this part of the video I do not blame you for going ahead and fast forwarding through all of this but we're just gonna bind these journals up with some wax thread a blunt needle and an awl and then we've got a little foam platform back behind them so we don't you know put a hole in our mat or our desk or damage anything okay there is our wax thread our needle here's our awl there are a lot of people that have a lot fancier awls than i do mine works for me it's got even got a little bent tip to it but mine works i'm good when it stops working that's when i'll get one <laughs> with a better handle and all of that stuff because i mean when i start doing big journals or signatures um that one does get a little painful so um i'm looking to get an what is it called ergonomically correct handle <laughs> to help me out so um, I'll be getting one of those from the shop probably in the near future especially for my thicker signatures I put together so I'm just going in through the middle hole coming back inside on the bottom hole back outside on the top hole making sure that I have enough string left there at the top and then I'm going back through middle and when you do have a thinner signature, it's a lot easier to get everything, that needle through every one of your layers. Pull that through. And then take our needle off. And make sure everything is tight. And I'm going to find a piece of lace or something to put on the inside. Sorry, I'm leaning over away from my microphone. I'll be back in a moment. Here we go. Let's do this. I'm going to put this on the inside of my signature just because I like a little something something inside of it. And we're going to put the needle back on just for a moment to get that sewn in and then we can tie this off so I'm going to put it through about there there we go and then I'm just going to tie that in there so double knot one and two and I've had plenty of people ask why do you put string or trim or whatever on the inside of your signature why do you do that what's the purpose in that it's because it's pretty that's why i do it it's pretty and i like it and then i'm going to get my bone folder and i'm going to mush down that double knot and then if you have enough string go ahead and make yourself a little bow if you want or just cut it off there that's fine too and then I'm going to trim off the excess and there is our little notebook little journal removable journal to go inside of our folio and so see look at there our little string is showing on that end and that end so it gives us a little extra something something so there is our vintage one finished now let's bind our shabby chic journal uh, you just saw me bind the vintage one so you don't have to watch this one unless you just want to but i'm gonna speed through this one and then we're going to show you how to make the actual folio 
right, and here is that journal put together with our little glassing pocket there and some more shabby cheeky kind of papers and there's the other side of our pocket pretty okay there's that one done now let's get out that 12 by 12 cardstock and i'll show you how we put that together okay now you are going to cut this at eight inches so your 12 by 12 cardstock cut it at eight inches okay then you're going to have this piece just save it for later and then you're going to get a scoreboard and lay it long ways and you're going to get your stylist you're going to Score it five inches, score it ten inches. Okay, then you're going to fold the one over and then you're going to fold this one back. And look, guys, you have just made the base of your trifold folio. Just like that, that simple. Folios are so easy, but so interesting at, you know, all the things that you can do with them. So this journal will go on the inside of this one like this, and it's got some seam binding, so then that will stick out from there, okay? So that's where that journal's going to go. Now, um, let's go ahead and pick out what colors or what patterns of paper we want to go on the inside. So like this one, I used all that Timmy Holtz kind of uh, paper from that same paper collection and did everything inside of this one with that. And I love how it turned out. It's very uniform, just very cute. So what we're going to do, let's start with our stackable pockets and our stackable pockets need to be uh, four and a quarter wide by no four and three quarters wide sorry four and three quarter inches wide by about two and a half some of them you know you could do two and a three quarters just to get them as tall as but i think these are two and a half and this one might be two and three quarters just so that I could cover up quite a bit of the background on that one. So we're going to pick out some papers. Um, I'm first going to round all of my corners on this one. I didn't do that on the vintage one. I don't wish I did. I just didn't do it on that one. But I am going to do it on this shabby chic one. So all of my corners, even the corner here. There we go. Yep, I like that. And then pick out our papers. Okay, I've got these papers here. And I think I'm going to make this one my large um, really long secretarial top pocket that's going to go along here um, and then these can be my three pockets that go on this side the stacked pockets so I'm going to cut this at four and a quarter I need to back up some of my stuff here so four and three quarters wide is what I'm needing. So there's four and three quarters wide. And then I'm going to do two and a half, two and a half, and then one closer to the three inch mark. So there's my three stackable pockets. 
And what I'm going to do to get those um, notches lined up is line up all three. And I'm going to do a pretty deep notch on all of those. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and ink them with my hickory smoke. So go around all of them, even the notches and ink. And then, like I said, this one's going to be my secretarial pocket. This one will be my pocket that goes on top of the secretarial pocket. And that one, we're going to make um, four and a quarter tall by four and three quarters. So let's see if we've already got... So we've got four and three quarters, and then we've got four inches tall. So I think I'm just going to go with that and not worry about cutting it any taller. I'm going to line this one up and make the same notch size on it. Ink all of it in my hickory smoke. I don't know, when I'm thinking of shabby chic... <laughs> I think of tool material or twa or whatever you however you pronounce that you know I'm from Alabama y'all I will definitely say that most Alabamians we are not sophisticated so I'm not sure about pronunciation of that but that's what I think of when I think of shabby chic okay I'm gonna go with a seven and a half inch height for this secretarial pocket. And then I'm going to go with four and three quarters wide. So that is the height and width of our secretarial pocket. Then I'm going to put my paper on the diagonal, put the point right there, and just go as deep as I would like to. But knowing that this pocket is going to go on top of it, so I don't want to go further down than what this pocket is. But I have plenty of room to go a little further if I want to. So like even there, let's do that. Just cut it and go. Don't be scared. Just do it. <laughs> now this pocket is not going to get a, um, a notch so it's just going to get inked and we're going to ink it just far enough down so that um, wherever that pocket that gets put on top of it you can still see ink on the edges okay so this is how this one's going to go and we can go ahead I'm putting my pockets down with um, eight inch score tape just because I love that I've always loved putting my pockets down with one eight inch score tape Ooh, that side's pretty too I don't know that I might not you know I want everything to be uniform inside of this and all of those are going to be lined up like that I don't know that I don't like that Nah, it's more uniform, but that is beautiful on that side. Okay, so eighth inch score tape or any any type of double sided thin tape that you have will work. It doesn't have to be score tape brand, but that is what we carry in scrapbookingwithme.com. So we would love it if you shopped with us um we do carry a lot of or keep in stock a lot of the 1 8 inch 1 8 inch and 1 4 inch is our two most popular i think score tape sizes so we keep that in stock and y'all, I've got something black all over my ring finger and just now realized it. So y'all been having to stare at a big black spot on my 
ring finger. Oh well. I'm sure you've had to stare at a whole lot worse things. <laughs> oh man. Okay, yes, that is a perfect tie. I love that. So you cut yours how you would like. And then I'm going to just barely round. I'm not going to do the deep round, but barely round the bottoms of that. Oh, I like that. So pretty. Okay. And I'm going to get my eighth inch score tape. I'm almost out of this one. I do have another roll. <laughs> but I'm going to get everything I can out of this one. Eighth inch score tape all the way to the top of our secretarial pocket. And then all the way across the bottom. And up this side. Okay, that's all of that one. I'm going to take my backs off. I will ink around the base when I get everything put on. Okay, we've ran out of score tape about right there, so I'll need to add a little bit more to this one. Just up to there. Okay, then line up this double pocket we just made and make sure that we don't go over that fold. Beautiful. Okay, then for these pockets, <laughs> one of which I dropped, we are going to... I think I'm going to do the barely round. I'll have to re-ink. That's okay. Um, this one's going to be the bottom one, so let's go ahead and round the bottom too. The bottoms of these are not going to be seen, but the tops are, so let's round those. And then re-ink our corners. Now, when I go to put on stackable pockets, this is how I do them. I'm going to line them up how I want them. And then, of course, see, you can't go too far up, or if you do, you're going to be able to see the back here. So when you take your card out, your tag out, whatever you put in there, your ephemera, what have you. When you take that out, you'll be able to see the background. Now, if you cover your base, you don't have to worry about that. But um, this is how I'm going to line mine up. Okay. And I'm going to make a pencil mark where the tops go. So the top of this one is there. The top of this one is there. The top of this one is there and I'm going to put my top one down first so score tape all across the bottom and the sides on the backs of all three let's just go ahead and put score tape on everything Okay, then I'm going to line this up so that the top is even with my little pencil mark that I've made. But then also, it's in the middle of my fold over here. So I'm just going to lay it down and then come back and make sure that everything is pretty straight. I'm not going to measure or anything. Just going to lay it down. But then when you start to um, put on your next pocket, you just need to make sure that everything is as straight as possible so it all lines up correctly. 
take my backs off here. And then pencil mark is there. So I'm just making sure of where I need to put my other pocket. Erin Jonas, you're making you your lunch. <laughs> okay. Backs off of this one. Okay, and this was our rounded corner bottom one. So we're just going to make sure of where our pencil mark is. And then try to get it as even over here um, as far as the bottom, where we place it at the bottom as possible. So there we go. And then we can erase that or you know what? You're going to be inking the edges. So just kind of ink over that and nobody will know. You're the only one that will know that there used to be pencil marks there. Well, y'all all know that mine used to have pencil marks there because you just watched me do it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and ink my base all the way around on the inside and outside. I'm going to fold this back and ink my crease. and then all of the inside, and then I'm going to ink around that edge and all of the front and the crease too. Then I cut down some of the paper, one of the digitals that Rachel and Bella Crafts provided for us. And I'm going to ink that with hickory smoke, and that's gonna be my cover here. Now remember, there's gonna be papers or um, journal cards and stuff on top of this so you won't see all of this all the time and I know it's very vintage but it's got those brighter colors in it that I associate with um, like the soft pastels with shabby chic so I'm good with that and that is going to be for the front and I just cut it down just a little bit so that the base cream color still shows but it's not so prominent so like a mat that goes back to my scrapbooking days. And y'all, I still love to scrapbook. No doubt about that at all. I still love to scrapbook. And I've got that crooked. So let's try to peel that up some and squish it over. Okay, and I'm going to do this little blue here. And what I do for lining this up for this little fold back, part I just do it eyeball it and then trim it up and I will round my corners and we'll just see what it looks like that's um, my measurement philosophy just cut it and then see what it looks like <laughs> Okay, so when I round the corners, let's see what it, how it fares. That one didn't get rounded. There we go. Oh yeah, I'm good with that. And let's go ahead and hickory smoke that. Then next I'll show you the closure that I did and then I'll show you how I made my um, tab cards to go inside let's see I think I like it better that way yes I do I'm going to put glue all over the back of this and add that decorative on. Okay, so when we open up, we're very uniform here. I love that. Very shabby chic in my opinion. 
Okay, and then let's go ahead and that can be one of our pieces for there. And then that can be another piece. I like that. Okay, let's just cut just the tip of this off. Let's get it a little shorter and go ahead and round those corners of these two pieces and get them inked. Okay, so there are two pieces that will go back behind this. Now we're going to make our closure like I did on this one. And we're going to punch three circles and they are one inch circles. So this is my one inch circle punch. And what I think I'm going to do is two pieces from our leftover chipboard or cardstock. And then my top one can be this green here and it'll go along with that green that's there. Okay. And we're going to glue these three together. So one, two, three. And we're just going to stack them all together. Smush, smush, smush. Stack, stack, stack. Just like that. Get all that glue smushed around good. Ink the edges. Okay. And then we're going to measure this and we want to get it at the four inch mark since we've got a eight inch tall folio. So right there is where our circle needs to go. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue down there just to hold that in place for a moment until I get it exactly where I want it. Okay, then I'm going to use my crop it all and we're going to punch that hole had to find my crop it all. Here it is. We're going to use the larger hole and let's go ahead and mark middle on this because I know me. I will not do it correctly if I don't mark the middle. Okay, I'm going to line that up and who knows it might still not be in middle but I'm okay. It's not going to ruin me if I not totally in the middle. Okay, and then I've got a gray wide eyelet. Oh yeah, that works out just fine. And I'm going to set my eyelet. There we go. I love that. So that is our closure done. And then I'm going to get some, hmm, I don't think I've got any gray um, seam binding, but I do have this pretty sorry silk. And we're going to do a long double piece. It's going to be about, mm, I would say about 26 inches long, doubled over. Okay. So make sure you double it over and then measure 26, around 26 inches long for your trim, whatever you are going to do. Okay, so there's my doubled over sari silk. That's S-A-R-I, correct? If anybody is wondering. I'm putting my loop, here's my loose ends. I'm putting my loop through the back, maybe, possibly. The Baker's Twine was a lot easier. But we will try to get the loop through the back 
and then we're going to do a little library knot. Okay, so there's your loop. Then get your loose ends, tie through that, and there's your pretty little closure knot for your folio. Cute, and then you would just tuck that back there, and you have your little cards that need to go back here behind this. It's cute stuff, right? I love that. Now, let's make our tabs and things that go on the inside. So most all of your cards need to be four inches wide or less. Now for these two, I would go just a little bit slimmer than four inches wide just because they're bigger pieces and to go down in there, you're going to get a lot more resistance because you got a lot further to go. On these, four inches wide works and you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so I've got this paper that was inside of my journal here, that paper. I've got that, and I've cut this just a little smidgen under four inches wide, and that fits good. Um, I feel like I'm getting a tiny bit of resistance, so I think I'll go just a smidge less. So we're actually going to three and three-fourths, and then I'm going to cut this down to a about seven inches tall and let's see I'm gonna round my corners also oh yeah we're good there no tab or anything is gonna go on top of this one so I'm just gonna round the corners of this and put that in so that'll be our little journaling card for there Oh, that's pretty. I love that. Um, I have some more of that, and I think I will make my middle card out of that one. I don't want every one of them to be out of the same paper, or the same design, anyway. So I'm just barely going under four inches, and I'm just going to see what she looks like. I need to trim down the height. I know that. Okay, that is fine. And I'm going to trim it down to just right above where it's going to be shown because we're going to have a pocket. So I'm going to trim it down to about there and add this pretty stuff to my scrap bowl. And I'm just going to round the top corners of these. So that one is going there, and it's going to have a tab at the top. I love that. So pretty. Okay, I've got my pieces uh, cut. I don't have them inked yet, so they'll all blend in in a moment. And I've got some folded over printed cardstock from the digital. And I just love that blue, so I'm going to cut me out or punch me out some tabs from it. So I've got three tabs there. I think one of my blue ones will go on top here and then the other blue one may be there. This one I think I'll put here and then so I just need one more. I'm not going to put a tab on that. I'm just going to put one more here and let's figure out where we want that to come from. Ooh, maybe this. Look, butterfly. Ooh, look, butterfly. Squirrel. <laughs> uh, that is me when I see anything butterfly. And look, that's a use of this paper that got printed on junk mail. And I just fold it over trim off what I don't need, put this in, and make sure that there is a space at the top. You know, once you get it in there, sometimes it gives you a little bit of a fit if it's not totally flat, 
make sure you get a little bit of space there at the top. I'm going to move it over just a little bit so I can get all of that butterfly that I can. There we go. Then you are done with the tab punch. And I'm thinking that one there. Oh, it's all perfectly shabby chic in my, in my opinion. I love that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and ink all of my pieces. This was just one of the cutouts um, from the digital. And that was from the digital that was this was that was from that um, paper from Prima I'm gonna ink everything with the hickory smoke front and back get my tabs put on and my journal inserted we will put on maybe a couple of tags for decoration on here and then we'll show you what it all looks like alrighty so we have everything inked we have our tabs on we have a little bit of decoration on there. I totally think this is shabby chic. <laughs> I love it. Um, the one thing that we did not do yet on this one is put a tab out on the edge like we did this one. And I really like that. So let's go ahead and do that to this one. We're going to use this paper that we have left over. I'm just going to cut a slice here and fold it over. And we might need to trim off just a least little bit more. Yep, we're going to have to. Okay, and when this one, I put the tab under there. I'm just going to put this one over because it's pretty. It's just going to go over the top of it and put some glue there and there and get that little butterfly tab put on there just hold it down for a few seconds till it adheres and we're good with that let's go ahead and fold this one up and i'll show you what it looks like Okay, and we're just going to go around and then around again and tuck in. And that's our closure. Okay, and then get our journal set in there correctly. And then same thing with this vintage one. So we got a shabby chic one and we got a vintage one. And then just tuck in. And there's your closure. So there's both of them. And um, I think I need to put my journal in my vintage one. What, what do y'all think? Probably, I was thinking, that sure does not seem as thick as my shabby chic one. I wonder why, Melina. There we go. So we got a tuck and we got a tuck. And there is... I'm showing some style today with this collaboration. I have a vintage folio made from a trifold folio made from 12 by 12 cardstock. And then I have a shabby chic. So same design, but just different styles. And um, I think they turned out quite well. I hope that you have enjoyed this um, video. I will open this one up, show you inside this one here is tab there tab there tab there and then another tab here and then we have a journal card big journal card here with lots of journal space on the back and then here's our little booklet we put in there i just love how these turned out and I am so honored to be part of this collaboration with so many great YouTubers. Some of my favorite YouTubers. And then, like I said, some of the new ones, new faces that I have not watched before. And I am always up for some new YouTubers to watch. New creative paper crafting YouTubers. So, there is my project for the Show Some Style uh, 
2023 collab with Rach and Bella Crafts and so many other fabulous YouTubers. Y'all go and watch all of their videos too. I'll try my best to have a playlist of all of the other videos in my description box below. So I'll have a playlist on my uh, channel too for the duration forever and ever. So y'all can go back and watch that too. Y'all have a great day. If you have any questions about these folios, if I missed a part that you think should have been covered, let me know and I'll try to explain it in a comment to you. Y'all have a great day. God bless. Bye y'all.